We give you praise and glory, Lord. We are looking for a great day today in your presence. We are expecting the kingdom of God to be manifested in this place and the lame to walk and the blind to see, the brokenhearted to be healed, Lord. We're just looking for you to manifest yourself in greatness here. For we come as little children, believing you, expecting, we're expecting, Lord, we're expecting to see your glory today. We're expecting every sickness and every disease to be healed today. For we know that that belongs to us. And so we're coming into agreement around the Word of God today that every sickness and every disease will be healed. We know that Jesus is the same yesterday. Jesus, the anointed one, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we expect the same things to happen today that happened when he walked this earth. The same things to happen in this healing service that happened in his healing services because he is the healer. He's the same Jesus, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. You're the healer and we magnify you and we glorify you. We look to you as our source of life. We cleave to you in every area of our lives and particularly this morning, Lord, in the area of a healthy body, a healthy mind, and a strong and born again spirit. We look to you and we give you praise. Lord, we thank you that if there's anybody in this place that's never made you Lord, that before this service is over, they'll realize what they've been missing. And they'll come into that kingdom where you reign, hallelujah. And we worship you and we believe for that. And we just completely put ourselves in your hands. We put out all fear, any kind of uh, apprehension in the name of Jesus. And we just come and put ourselves into your hands to receive today. And we'll give you all the glory for it. And we thank you in advance for it, Lord. I'm asking you to give us understanding today, to give me utterance, Lord. You speak through me what you'd speak if you were here in person where we could see you. We know you're here in the Spirit. We'd love to see you in person, Lord. We thank you for your revealing yourself to us. I thank you, Jesus, that you never miss healing school. Thank you, you've never missed a healing school. We've never had healing school where we didn't have people healed in miracles. So we just, we relax in your presence. And I would just throw myself over on you and you bring forth whatever you would have me to say today. And we'd give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. You may be seated. Oh, I tell you what, isn't it wonderful to have a healer in the house today? Yes. Wonderful to have a savior every moment of every day that's ready to deliver us from any situation. What a wonderful thing it is to walk and live and dwell in the kingdom of God, even while we're still here in this natural body because we have a savior. We talked about yesterday that Jesus came preaching the kingdom preaching and saying that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom is here. Get in on it. It's a new day and a new way, hallelujah. And that's what we're gonna do in the area of healing today. We're just gonna get in on what the kingdom of God has to say. Once we come into the kingdom of God, we're not limited to the best that the earth's got. Sometimes the best the earth's got is not enough. Sometimes the best doctor in the whole world can't get you healed because he hadn't got the answer. But when we're dealing in the kingdom of God, we don't have to even pay any attention to the word impossible, because there's not any word like that in this kingdom. There is no word like that in the kingdom of God. When you hear impossible in the world, you just immediately ought to click over and think, well, all things are possible with God. All things are possible to him that believeth, hallelujah. So we're, we're in a place today, we're going at this in a way where we're not even looking at what the world says. We, we don't even care about their report. We appreciate what they can do. But sometimes they just can't do enough. We appreciate it, but today we're not looking at their report, we're gonna look at God's report. And then we come down to what the 
Word talks about whose report will you believe? What that song says, whose report will you believe? Well, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to walk in the kingdom of God. I'm going to let the kingdom of God flow out of me and around me and into my body and make me well, give me a sound mind all the days of my life. Hallelujah. So we're just going to start looking at the Word today and we're going to, you know, you, you can't believe beyond what you actually know. If you don't know it, you can't believe for it. That's why faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And we have to keep our faith stirred up by hearing. You, you, don't, you don't have it uh, in your heart just because you heard it 25 years ago. To keep something in your heart, you've got to continually feed on it. So it's good to come to healing school when you're well. You can just take a big dose of God's medicine. You can't get an overdose. You just take all you want. The more you take, the better you get. Hallelujah. The freer you get. So we're going to just go to the Word of God and take some some uh, word uh, from the Old Covenant first, and then we're going to go and continue to talk about the New Covenant. And I want to talk to you about something today that thrills me every time I meditate on it, and that is this same Jesus. See, that's the reason you can be healed of something today that the doctors have said is terminal. I've been really studying the ministry of Jesus lately, and I'm reading back through the Gospels, just looking at the things that he did, he said. And you know, in, in the, we get in the natural a lot of times when we're believing God, we get in the natural and we have thoughts like, well, you know, that person's been that way since birth. This is a hard case. Well, I'm going to tell you what, there aren't any hard cases in the kingdom of God. You can't come up with a hard case. I don't care how far gone a person is, it's not a hard case in the kingdom of God. It might be a hard case down here in the earth, but in the kingdom of God, the place where God rules, and that ought to be in your heart, there's not any hard cases. And have you ever noticed, looking through the Gospels, how many times it talks about the man that was born blind, or the man that was, the person that was lame from birth, or, I mean, Jesus just specializes in those kind of things. He specializes in what the world calls terminal. The woman that had been bowed over for 18 years, the woman that had the issue of blood for 12 years, it doesn't make any difference if you've had something all your life. We're not talking to the doctor here, we're talking to the healer here. And he can take care of it, hallelujah. I love, I love the way Jesus would minister. We're going to talk about that today. So let's talk, first of all, let's look at some scripture in the Old Covenant. Let me just quote this first one to you. Hosea 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, if you don't know about healing, you're not going to have any faith for it. But if you want to know about healing, you can find out from the Word of God what God says. And if you'll believe what he says, faith will come. I mean, we get all kind of people from all different backgrounds in the healing services. One time in Anaheim, a couple woke, walked up to me and they said, Gloria, pray for us. We are scared to death. We've never been in a meeting like this. We're from the so-and-so church. <coughs> they hadn't been hearing anything in that church unless it was an unusual one. They said, we are scared to death. Pray for us. But we love it. We like this. See, people want to get, they want to know the power of God. And you might be here today and you've never been in a, you, your church doesn't talk about healing. In fact, they talk against it. You, you don't know about, uh, you've never been in many meetings like this. Well, just relax and go to the Word of God and see what God says and take that. See, Jesus said the traditions of men make the Word of God of no effect. And uh, so many of the, most of the religious people, I'd say, in his day wouldn't have anything to do with healing and the way he did it. They didn't, they thought it would be okay if you would do it our way, but the problem was when you did it their way, it didn't work. When you kept all the, all the things that they had added to the laws and the, you did it all this way and you did it all that way and you left God out of it and the reality of God out of it, then it didn't work. And so when Jesus healed the woman that was bowed over, he did it, according to them, he did it on the wrong day. Now you think about it. She'd been in that shape for 18 years. 
and they had had 18 years to do it their way. But yet she stayed bowed over. What did Jesus do? He rebuked that spirit of infirmity off of her. He, he, he brought the kingdom of God nigh unto her. He rebuked the devil off of her and she straightened up. Well, the, the religious people in charge, the experts, you gotta watch these experts. They'll talk you right out of everything. I get tickled at that word, especially after I heard Brother Hagin say, an expert's just a little spurt away from home. <laughs> but the experts, you watch the experts in the Gospels and in the Bible, in the book of Acts. The experts, they were never in the flow. They were always telling them why it wouldn't work. You did it the wrong way. You said the wrong thing, the wrong day. But the experts couldn't get any power of God. And you know it's still pretty much that way. These experts that we, I like, when you read an article about uh, tele-evangelists, which is a stupid word, when you read an article about that, they'll quote some expert from some university. This is what so-and-so says. He is, a, he is an expert in this field. This is his field. He's, you know, he knows all about it. I guarantee you, you go look that expert up and he won't have a thimble full of the power of God manifested in his life. You can count on it. So you can't let experts, the experts in Jesus' day, they, they tried to talk, talk the people out of it. They tried to, to tell, him, tell the people that, they told that man that was born blind, why this man, Jesus, he's a sinner. Why well, he, couldn't, he couldn't do anything. This man born blind, they came to him too late. He said, well, I don't know if he's a sinner or not. I just know I was blind and now I see, hallelujah. So I'm going to stick with Jesus and forget the experts. And you'd do well to do the same. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Let's look at Psalm 145. We could just have healing school on this one Psalm, but we're not going to. You know, Ken and I want you to get your money's worth when you come to these meetings. So we try to preach two or three sermons every session. This, Psalm 145, lets us know, it'll, it'll really give you the reason that you can get healed today and that you will get healed today. This is really the, knowing this one thing right here will change your life forever where God's concerned. Once you get a revelation of the goodness of God. Now you don't get that from the experts. I must tell you that. You don't get that from tradition. You get from tradition that God wants, he's the one that made you sick to teach you something. Or God, you get from tradition of the, of the forefathers, you get from tradition that God gets glory from the wonderful way you bear the pain and agony of disease. I've never known sick people to be evangelistic. I've never known sick people. I'm not evangelistic. If I feel bad, I feel bad. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not out trying to win souls when I get sick or feel bad. It's not evangelistic. It doesn't promote the kingdom of God. It doesn't bring God glory. Scripture doesn't teach that. Scripture says he gets glory when the lame walk and the blind see. The scripture said God gets glory. Jesus himself said, my father's glorified when you bear much fruit. And he wasn't talking about cancer there. He was talking about prayer, answer to prayer fruit. When you bear much fruit, when you abide in me and, I, and my words abide in you, ask what you will and it'll be done. Then he said, my father's glorified when you bear much fruit. So we, well, let's just stick with Jesus. I feel like he knows what glorifies God. But now the experts, they'll tell you this and that, and this glorifies God. The way you dress glorifies God. The way you do this, the way you do that. Things, outer things. I tell you, everything with God's from your heart. And you dress according to what's right and what's seemly because in your heart you want to please God, not because it's the lawful thing for you to do. You see, when you love God and you walk in love, the scripture says you fulfill all the law. So when you walk in love, you're going to do right. But this, this scripture right here lets you know something that are, there are a lot of professionals in the religious world that don't know this. And this is what's important right here. Verse 8, the Lord is gracious. That means he's disposed to show favors. 
and full of compassion. He's full of compassion. Slow to anger and of great mercy. If he's full of compassion, there's no room for anything else. He's got great mercy. Mercy, just the word mercy is not enough. You have to amplify mercy some way. Tender mercy, great mercy. God's mercy is so wonderful. We know that it endures forever. The scripture says so. We know that his mercy is renewed every morning. So what you did yesterday, hey, mercy's for you today. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and, and of great mercy. Uh, I think I have a definition here of mercy from Christ the Healer. That's one of the best books on healing I've ever read by F.F. F. Bosworth. To suffer with another eager yearning. God has eager yearning to do you good. We think we've got to talk God into the idea of doing something for us, and most of the time, He's already done it. He's already taken care of our healing. He, he put our sicknesses and diseases on Jesus. What do we have to do? We just have to believe what He's already done. That's faith. We have to believe what He's already said. He said, F.F. Uh, F. Bosworth says that, imagine the vast Pacific Ocean elevated high above, pouring into every crevice. This is a picture of God's benevolent attitude toward us. After being first properly enlightened, place yourself where God's mercy can reach you without his having to violate the glorious principles of his moral government. Now that's what we were talking about, about the spiritual laws of God. God's got spiritual laws. He's, they're the words that have come out of his mouth. You get on those words, and you'll have whatever he said. And that's what this is saying. Then wait and see if you don't experience the most overwhelming demonstration of his love and mercy. The blessing will flow until you have reached the limit of your expectation. Remember 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says, the eyes of the Lord look to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking for that one whose heart is perfect toward him, that he might show himself strong on their behalf, well, that word perfect means devoted, consecrated, faithful, dedicated. God is looking for someone who's put themselves in a position for him to show himself strong on their behalf. He's looking for you. And I don't care if you are in the darkest jungle. If you, are, if you are, have dedicated yourself to God and you're walking with God in the light that you have and you're looking and seeking, the Bible teaches us to seek. It doesn't just tell us to be lazy, and if somebody comes to teach us something, okay, and if, if not, well, we just won't have it. It doesn't teach us that. It says to seek. It says you draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. That's our part, to draw nigh to God. God's not like the devil. He won't force himself into your life. If you want God in your life, you're going to have to open the door for him. That's why you have to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. God is looking for someone to bless. He loves healing school. In fact, this was his idea. I would never, never, never have told me to have healing school because I really didn't like to get up on the, in the pulpit. I never had done it much at that time, just occasionally here or there, and I never did like it. And I used to have it easy. I could just come to these meetings and just have a great time and goof off with everybody else. But in 1979, the Lord spoke to me. A man had, someone had written me a, a letter and said, God wants, uh, God's got something for you to do. So that morning, everybody else still asleep. I was out praying on the back porch. We were up in the country. I was out on the screen porch just praying. And, and the Lord spoke to me the strongest I've heard before or since. And he, it had to be strong because I would never have done it on my own. And uh, he said, I want you to start teaching on healing in, every, in the meetings. He didn't say healing school at that time. He just said, teach on healings in the meeting. Just teach what you know about how to get healed and stay healed. So uh, it was so powerful Actually, what happened was I got through praying and I went in to wash my hair. Does God ever talk to you when you wash your hair? You know why he can get through to you? You, you give him an opportunity. You're not thinking about anything. You're just, 
And washing dishes is good. Some of you guys ought to try it. Washing dishes is good <laughs> to hear from God. Ironing. Back in the old days when I ironed. <laughs> you know, because your mind's not busy. That's why they used to say women had uh, talked about women's intuition because women were in a place at home and they were doing things like that and the TV wasn't blaring and they, they had some quiet around them while they did mundane things like wash the dishes and they could hear. But now that women are out and busy, their intuition's not any better than the men's. But that's a sidetrack. So anyway, I was washing my hair and the Lord spoke to me and told me that and it was so strong. I never had thought about it. I wouldn't have thought about it. Not in a hundred years. And so it was so strong that when Ken got up, I told him that. I'm glad I did because I might have backed out if I hadn't. And so in that, that was in July and September. We had the first healing service in the meetings. Then after I had a couple, well, he told me to start laying hands on people. So I started doing that. And then about January of the next year, this was in September, I thought, well, I've done that. I've, had, I've taught on healing and, and I think it's time to stop. And so in that meeting in Lakeland, Florida, the Lord spoke through Ken and he said to me, which I don't know that Ken's ever, twice maybe he's prophesied to me that I remember. He said, the Lord said he wants this healing school to continue until he comes. So I'm either going to have to live forever or he's going to have to come in my lifetime. <laughs> but so I dropped all thought of ever quitting and... Uh, and I'm so glad. It's been such a blessing to me. It's been so wonderful for, for God to let me minister people and lay hands on them. And I didn't know it'd be wonderful. You know, you don't always know God's, what God's telling you is going to be wonderful. But I tell you, I wouldn't take anything in my life for that. That's why it always pays to just obey God. I can tell you this, it's going to be for your good. God is a good God. And let's just go back to that scripture. The Lord is gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all. That's why you're going to be healed today. The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all His works. Isn't that a good scripture? The Lord is good to all. Brother Roberts came preaching back in the late 40s started in the late 40s preaching that God is a good God and into the 50s. And I tell you, the experts didn't like it. The experts didn't like it. Brother Hagin said nearly everywhere he went that the churches, the pastors were mad at Oral Roberts for saying such a thing as that, that God wants you well. God's a good God and God wants you well. What was he preaching? He was preaching what Jesus said when he came. The kingdom of God is here. Spirit of the Lord's upon me and he's anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to announce to the captives you're free and announce to the blind that you receive your sight. The experts didn't like it then. They didn't like it when Brother Roberts did it. Brother Kenneth Hagin said they were just, all, almost all of them were mad at him. He said, what do you want them to say? That God is a, a bad God? Well, these experts said, no, but people get the wrong impression about God. <laughs> well, they'd been preaching about Job's downfall and about Paul's, I started to say Job's thorn, and about Paul's thorn in the flesh and all that. And how you probably got one too because God's mad at you. And Brother Roberts changed the church's idea about God. I must tell you that. The, the experts didn't like it much, but the people came by the thousands to get healed. See, that's the thing about healing. If you're a pastor in a church, that's what Brother Hagin calls the dinner bell. That healing is the dinner bell. People out here in the world, the experts, they'll just pick you to pieces, you know. But the people out in the world, they don't care. They'll do whatever you think or whatever you tell them to do if they think they can get healed. You can preach whatever you want to. You can roll in the floor. You can talk in tongues. You can do whatever you want to. If people can get healed there, they'll come. We had one man come up in the healing line. 
he just started to get down in the floor. And the usher said, what are you doing? He said, well, I thought this is what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Whatever, it, and then they'll come from every religion. Reinhard Bonnke's proved that. I mean, he goes into those Muslim countries and he'll have more people in the meeting than there are in the town. Coming to get the blind eyes open, having the lame walk. This same Jesus shows up to do the same thing that he did. Hallelujah. So God is a good God. He's good to all. That settles the issue. God knows that healing is good. In, so, in Acts 10, 38, it said when Jesus went about doing good, uh, he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So God considers healing good. Only the experts argue about that. Any Dumbo ought to know that healing is better than sickness. One time somebody sent Ken a postcard of these two chimpanzees. One of them said, I've been rich and I've been poor and rich is better. I've been sick and I've been well and well is better. Now look at Psalm 103. This is a great Psalm here. Ooh, you could live on this Psalm. Settles the issue really. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Some places, you know, they say, well, at our church, we don't, te we don't teach healing. We don't preach healing. We, we preach the new birth. We think it's more important. Well, I think it's more important, too. If I had to make a choice, I'd definitely choose the new birth. But I want you to learn right here, you don't ever have to make that choice. This says, forget not all his benefits. And then it begins to list the benefits. Psalm 68 says, God daily loadeth us. Daily, not one time. We're living in a state of salvation, a state of being made sound. He daily loadeth us with the benefits of salvation. You ought to get up every morning and just expecting to be loaded with the benefits of your salvation. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. The power of God, the anointing of God, the anointed one, the Holy Ghost is in you, hallelujah. And you ought to be expecting every day. You ought to just get up every day thinking, I wonder what good things God is going to do for me today, hallelujah. That's expectancy. That's faith. That's what causes God to move. That's just the kind of a heart attitude God is looking for to show himself strong. Who forgiveth? Here's one of the benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? I like the all words in the Bible. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? You didn't commit something God's not going to forgive. I don't care how recent it was either. It won't keep you from getting healed today. That's because God's full of mercy and compassion and eager yearning to do you good, and it's because he's good. Now just keep your place there and we'll settle this issue about the sin part. A lot of times people need this in healing school. We had a girl that had stolen things off the book table the day before. And she'd come into healing school. She'd been paralyzed on one side of her body for two years. And she would never have been able to receive her healing without this scripture. Verse uh, in James 5, 14, it says, well, 13 says, is any among you afflicted? That means trouble. That doesn't mean with sickness there if you look it up in the Greek. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. You know, if you've got trouble, you're the one that better be praying about it. It's good to write and get prayer requests and and have people pray with you and have the pastor pray or, or the church ministers pray with you, that's good. But I'm telling you what's really good is for you to pray too. You better pray too. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. That would be like the prayer business would be like, is any merry? Well, let him get somebody to sing for him. Now, uh, if you're in trouble, I'm telling you one thing, nobody cares like you care. You might have a good pastor but he may be in trouble too. He may be having something he's got to pray through. And he, he, we're just naturally more concerned about our own trouble, aren't we? So you're the one that needs to lay hold of it in faith. Don't, you learn how to be 
dependent on your own spiritual welfare and what you've got in your heart and you pray. Get others to pray with you, that's good if they know how to pray. Don't get somebody to pray with you that says, well, Lord, if it's your will, heal him. Just forget that. Or uh, if, you, if that person doesn't know what the will of God is, they cannot have any faith in their prayer. That's not good. So this says, if any's afflicted among you, let him pray. If he's mar any merry, sing psalms. If any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save. And the same word that's translated saved is translated healed. And it's the word that salvation comes from. Shall save or heal the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. Now that's good, but here's the mercy of God. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. If he have committed sins. So today, even if you've been living in sin, maybe your lifestyle's the reason you've got what you've got. And you, you know the devil tells you, well, look, big boy, you got yourself into this. God's not going to heal you because you got into it by doing wrong anyway. See, Satan really, he, ha he depends a lot on con condemnation. Because you, if you believe God's your problem, then you're not going to believe God for, be able to believe God for healing or anything. Or he'll say you're in it because, you, you know, as a punishment. Now, there are, certain th there are certain things, in fact, the Bible just says the wages of sin is death. But it's not the punishment of God that comes on you, really. Now, there is a wrath of God coming, but it's not here yet. We're in the day of grace, the scripture says. And oh, yes, thank you, God, we're in the day of grace. There, but the, it's not God punishing you. It's that when the wages of sin are the produce of sin, sin's lifestyle brings death. Sin's lifestyle brings sickness and disease. Sin's lifestyle brings defeat. That's because it's part of the curse and it uh, promotes the curse in your life. But according to the mercy of God, you could get healed today. You can get forgiven for your sins today and healed at the same time. Now that's how good God is. He won't hold it against you. He wants you to be free. He loves you even when you do wrong because he's a good God. And he's always eagerly yearning to get you into a place where he can minister to you. I think that's why he likes healing school so much because we just come in here and let him do what he likes to do. Hallelujah. So if you've got sin in your life, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you've never become a believer, well, today's the day. You can do it all at one time. If you've got sin in your life, repent of it. If you're a Christian, get it under the blood of Jesus. And if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, but when we pray the prayer, I'll lead you in prayer and you pray it from your heart. You can become a new creature and be healed at the same time. Oh, God's good. God is good. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who forgiveth, uh, who healeth all thy diseases? Say, all of my diseases. God heals all of my diseases. Who redeems thy life from destruction? Actually, we have people healed in healing school of things they forgot they had because of that scripture right there. Who redeems thy life from destruction? That could be from an accident. That could be from disaster. That could be from a terminal illness like cancer trying to destruct your body. God is the one that redeems your life. God wants you to live the full number of your days. Who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. You ought to see yourself that way. Don't see yourself pitiful. Don't you ever see yourself pitiful. Woe is me. Nobody loves me. See yourself crowned with loving kindness and tender mercies. You've got a crown on. Hallelujah. You've been crowned. Loving kindness. Just see myself with loving kindness and tender mercies on me. That's the way you ought to see yourself. You ought to see yourself the way God sees you. That's a benefit. That is a benefit of God. 
who satisfies thy mouth with good so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. That's a tremendous benefit of God. Medicare will never see the day at any price that they can do that. Who satisfies your mouth with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. I believe we ought to stay strong, intact, well all the days of our lives. That's what 1 Thessalonians 4 says. It. He prayed that you be preserved blameless, whole. Let me give you that. This is good ammunition. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Barclay says, it is my prayer that God, the God of peace may completely consecrate you. I pray that you be kept sound. That's the word that, that salvation, uh, soundness is a part of the word salvation. I, I pray that you be kept sound in spirit, soul, and body. You could be kept, you could say that you be kept saved in spirit, soul, and body, for then you will be blameless. Now, when you look up the word holy in the King James, W-H-O-L-L-Y, it means whole, complete, undamaged, and intact. When I looked that word up, I'd been praying this over myself for some time that God would keep me intact, spirit, soul, and body all the days of my life. So then I added these other words, complete and undamaged, intact. You ought to say that about yourself every day. Lord, I thank you for renewing my youth like the eagles. I thank you for keeping me sound, whole, complete, undamaged, and intact, spirit, soul, and body. I don't want my body to live just for my soul and my mind to be gone. I want to be intact. I believe in God to keep me intact. I don't want you to have to lead me around, tell me when to eat, when to go to bed. I'm believing to stay on my feet and I'm believing to be strong, intact all the days of my life. That's the will of God for me. He said, I pray uh, in the very God of peace, Sanctify you wholly, sanctify you complete, undamaged and intact, and your spirit, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. Hallelujah. That's what God wants for us. So take advantage of that. Do it every day. And this says in Psalm 103 that our youth being renewed is a benefit of God. It's a wonderful benefit. And even if you're young today, like 20 years old, I'd start saying it. I didn't know till I was about 40 to do it much. I mean, I, you get serious. You get more serious as you get about 40. But I'd tell you to get serious today if I were you because 40's coming. And you want to stay intact. It's a benefit of God. He renews our youth. He renews our strength. If you're 80 or 90 years old today, well, it's not too late for you. God's Word is ready anytime you're ready. Just start saying it. Start putting it in your mouth. It says there, your mouth, who satisfies your mouth with good. Start putting good words in your mouth. I'm telling you, there's a great temptation when you get to be about 40 to start putting old words in your mouth and joke about it and laugh about it because the world laughs about it. But that's all they've got is a laugh. They don't got God renewing their youth. Don't start saying, oh my word, I can't see anything. I, you know, you get about 40 and ha, ha, ha this and ha, ha, ha that and, and I can't remember what else and ha, ha, ha. No, uh -uh. don't do that. Put good words in your mouth about your body, about your soul, about your spirit and stay strong and start saying if you're weak today, you've got weakness in your body, I'd, I'd say that continually. The Lord renews my strength, as one scripture in Isaiah says. The Lord renews my youth. I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And the life, you know what happens? The life of God begins to come out of your spirit and affects your body. That's what happens. That's what Proverbs 4.20 is what happens when you speak the words of God over yourself. Don't talk doubt and unbelief. 
who satisfies your mouth with good. The Lord, verse 6, the Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Somebody's oppressing you, trying to do you wrong? Believe God. He's a terrific lawyer. He, he gets cases thrown out. That's what I like. Some guy was suing us for being a terrorist. And he sued us in a, he filed charges in a couple of different states and, and uh, among other things, that was just one of the things that he accused us of. And so anyway, we got it thrown out. That's the best. We looked to our lawyer to do something, our lawyer Jesus. Well, we had a lawyer to handle the legal affairs, but we looked to our lawyer Jesus. That stuff is a bunch of trash. Bible says no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Now, Ken and I stand on that. We stand on that. And if you're a weapon formed against us, I guarantee you, you won't prosper because we believe God. Well, anyway, that was a side issue. But the Lord does execute judgment for those that are oppressed. I mean, you may not can afford a lawyer. If you, if you can't and there's no way you can get a lawyer to help you, well, you got a scripture. See, God will do everything you need. I mean, God, in his word to Israel, he said, I'll be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. God is the soundness of your life. That's why Deuteronomy said, uh, Deuteronomy 30 says, cleave to him for he is your life and the length of your days. Hallelujah. That's what we have to do is cleave to him. So that's a great scripture right there in Psalm 103. Heals all of our diseases, forgives all of our sins, crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, renews our youth like the eagles. Start saying that all the time. My youth is renewed like the eagles. My youth is renewed like the eagles. It's a benefit. That's just a benefit. Now then, the scripture says in uh, 107, I'll just read this to you. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. This verifies what I said earlier. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. See, that's the mercy of God at work. Psalm 91, 16 says, With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You ought to live 70 or 80 years, and if you're not satisfied, live a, long, a little while longer. I've heard Brother Hagin say that for years. He's now in his, uh, I think, 77 years old, 77 or 78, and he's not yet satisfied. So he's just keeping on keeping on. Still keeping a full schedule, preaching the word, having long meetings, Holy Ghost meetings, hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. With long life will I satisfy him. You know, in the Old Testament, you read about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and those great men, it'll say that they, they were full of days and that they were satisfied. They lived out the number of their days, hallelujah, and they were satisfied. That's what belongs to us. That's a benefit. So you, it's not God's will for you to die young. Think, well, maybe because of the way I've lived, maybe it's God's will to cut my life short. No, mercy is God's will. Goodness is God's will. He wants you to get healed and to live right. If you've lived wrong, change, repent, what Jesus said. The kingdom of heaven is here. Get into it. There's a new day and a new way. Get into it. It's the kingdom of God and His ways, where God has dominion, where He rules. That's what the kingdom of God is. And Jesus said, it's within you. So you begin to live from your heart, and live from the inside out instead of the outside in, and you can change your whole way of life. There's no reason for you to despair of your past, not with the blood of Jesus. There's no reason for you to commit suicide not with Jesus in control. I don't care what your problem is. Jesus can help you. He can make it work for you. You can have life and enjoy life more abundantly even if you're in prison today. In fact, Ken had one man tell him that was in, been given 130 years in prison. That ought to do you for a little while. He said he is happier on the inside than he ever was on the outside. He said he was freer. He said, I'm freer on the I'm freer in here than I ever was out in the street. 
because he got the peace of God working for him. So suicide is a devil thought. I mean, the devil just comes with, to torment you, try to talk you into suicide. It's not the will of God, and it's not the, any solution. It's no solution, absolutely no solution. So you rebuke that when you hear it. Don't, don't think, oh, well, I, I just think I'll kill myself. Don't even think about it, even if you're not seriously thinking about it. Don't entertain devil thoughts. Rebuke it. Tell it to get out. Don't take your life. Give it. Give it to Jesus. Let him do something with it. Let him make it worthwhile. So it's God's will for you to live out the full number of your days, for you to live satisfied. Exodus 23, 25, and 26 says, You shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land, and the number of thy days I will fulfill. God said if you'd live with him and serve him, that he would take sickness away from the midst of them. That's, that was under the old covenant. We live in, in a new covenant with better promises. Jesus has borne our sicknesses and carried our diseases, and yet even if we can be born again and if we don't walk in the light of what belongs to us and if we don't keep the door of the window of faith open for God to move, we don't enjoy the things that Jesus purchased for us like healing and deliverance, like peace. You've just got to give God place in your life by believing what he says. That's faith. Exodus 15, 26 says, For I am the Lord that healeth thee. See, really God is always the healer. He's always ready. Anytime you release faith, even in the middle of the night, nobody's there except you. You don't have to find a healing service. The way to God is always open. Faith will always bring him on the scene. I love the fact about God that you don't, ever get voicemail when you talk to him. <laughs> I don't like voicemail. You know, you can hardly get business done over the phone anymore because of voicemail. All you can get is one recording right after another. Give me a person. Give me a person. No. You know, my office knows I don't like to hear it. And uh, I want somebody to talk to. I want somebody at the other end. I don't want to hear. You know, when you talk to God and you, you uh, ask him for help, You've never heard him say, I'm away from the throne right now. <laughs> or you've never heard him say, uh, all of our lines are busy, but we'll take you in the order of your call. You might be five zillionths down the line if he had voicemail. No, God's always there. And faith will always connect you with that anointing that'll bring deliverance to you. What is faith? Just believe in what the Word says. Get, if you wake up in the middle of the night with a symptom, you don't know what to do, get your Bible and take these scriptures and begin to read them. And just act on them. Rebuke sickness and disease. Rebuke that evil spirit that's trying to make you sick. And, and command it to go out of your life. God is present to heal. He's present to heal everywhere. For I am, healing is his idea. He, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Jeremiah 30, 17 says, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. Got any old wounds today? Well, you've come to the right place. This is veterans, near Veterans Day, isn't it? And uh, we have a lot of veterans healed in healing school. Of, we had one man not too long ago that had uh, been uh, damaged by Agent Orange and he couldn't bend. He couldn't, I've forgotten exactly what he couldn't do, but there were some physical things he couldn't do like bend. And it had torn up his life and he got total deliverance that day in healing school. There was one general that had ejected out of an airplane several times and it had compressed his spine. And he got, uh, I don't know how much, I've forgotten how much, but how, whatever it had been compressed, he got taller that day, that much taller and the pain left him. Any old wounds, hallelujah, this is the right place. God wants to make you well. I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. The God gave his people really immunity from disease. He said he'd take sickness away from the midst of them. And Moses said, this is the NIV of Deuteronomy 7:15. the Lord will keep you free from every disease. 
Now that's where we want to live right there. It's good to get healed when you're sick, but it's better just to stay well. And you live according to God's plan and you can stay well. And let's just take a moment to look at God's healing. We all know it, but let's look at it again. We all know it, but we don't all do it. Proverbs 4. Says my son, in verse 20, my son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes and keep them in the midst of thine heart. Now that's so he's telling you right there how to keep your heart full of the word. Give the word your attention. You're not going to get the word in your heart doing other things. Get the, give the word your attention. Incline your ear and keep the word in front of your eyes. So the word goes into your heart through your eyes and your ears. And it can't get in your ears and in your eyes without you giving it your attention. Now this is the way you let, live well. This is the way you get well. For they, uh, verse 21 says, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they, the words, are life unto you unto those that find them, and health to all, there's that word all again, to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues, are the outgoings, are the forces of life. See, way you keep your heart has to do with the life force that comes out of you. I saw it this way one time in the Philippines. I was getting ready to go have a healing service, and I looked out the hotel window, and there was a big fountain a little distance from me, but it was shooting way up in the air. And the Lord used that to let me know how this works. He, he said, as long as there is an overflow out, I don't know how big that mouth was of that fountain. It could have been this big. As long as there was an overflow, he said, there, you couldn't put any trash down in that fountain. It would just wash right out, just wash right out. Or, he said, if it's shooting way up in the air like it was doing that day, you couldn't even get close to it. Now, what did Jesus say? Out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure, stores up good in his heart. And that's what he gets in his life. Then the evil man stores up evil, and that's what he gets in his life. So you store up the Word of God, and it causes your spirit to keep an overflow. That's why it's easy to believe God when you come to a meeting. It's easy to get healed in a meeting like this because you're, you're, you, most of you have been here for a couple of days and you've been feeding on the Word and your faith is up. Why is your faith up? Because you've been hearing the Word of God and faith comes by hearing and you've been receiving it. And it's easy. You've got, you're overflowing now. You're getting it overflowing. We ought to live with an overflow. I use tapes a lot. Uh, I use tapes in the car and tapes here and there and everywhere. I use tapes a lot to, uh, you, it's, it won't do all you need, but it'll help you to like when you're driving, you can't be reading. You need to read the word for yourself, but when you're driving, you can't be reading. Many of you are in traffic and you have to spend time. I tell you, everybody that has to spend time on the freeway in traffic, they ought to be spiritual giants. You ought not ever be listening to one of those dumb talk shows when you could be hearing the Word of God in your car and building yourself up. Every summer, we go on the motorcycle trip with uh, Jesse and Kathy Duplantis and, and uh, Jerry and Carolyn Savelle and Dennis and Vicki Burke and Ken and I. And John and Marty went with us one year. We go on motorcycle trips. This year, we left Steamboat, Colorado, and we went up all, we went up to Wyoming, all the way up one side of Wyoming into South Dakota. We went to Mount Rushmore, and we went to Old Faithful, and came down the other side of Wyoming. And uh, we had uh, some Joyce Meyer tapes with us. I bought to get, actually give my granddaughter, and I haven't let her have them yet. <laughs> and I ordered them off television, and, and it was so good. She was telling us about the 10. You can order this tape. You tell her I sent you if you order it. She was telling us about the uh, what is it? wilderness mentality. 10 things she gave us that'll keep you in the wilderness. I'm telling you, it was good. And we weren't doing it. We were just riding and looking at the scenery. We listened to one tape right after the other. It's about a four-tape series. 
We listened to one tape right after the other, and it was so good, and we enjoyed it so much. And when we got home, we, we, we never had met her, but when we got home, we called her and asked her if she would come teach that to our staff in one day. So we set aside one whole day, and she came, and she taught morning and afternoon wilderness mentality. You see, that word strengthens you. It edifies you. It builds you up. It, so, uh, the act says it gives you your inheritance, able to build you up and give you your inheritance among the saints. Well, if you don't know what the will says, you're not going to make any demands on it. You've got to find out what the Scripture says. That's what this says in uh, Proverbs 4. You keep that word going in your eyes and in your ears and you give it your attention and life will be coming out of you to keep your body well. Life will be flowing out of you and sickness and disease can't touch you. I know this. I know that I can have a symptom of something in my body. Uh, you know, and, and I've, I've known Ken, I mean, I, I've seen him get out of bed really sick and go to the pulpit. One time, I remember, we had to help shaving, but usually it's not that bad. But you can have a symptom of something in your body and you can walk up here and begin to preach and, it, and you totally forget about any, any un discomfort that there was in your body. Why is that? Because the anointing starts coming out of you and the life of God just causes this body and its problems to subside. Now you can preach and stay sick, but you'll never, even if you might go off in an hour or so, you might have that symptom back. But you, while you're preaching, you'll never think about it. Isn't that something? That's this, that is proof of this scripture right here. That the life of God comes out of your heart and it will affect your body. Now we need to live in that place where we operate out of an overflow. Uh, John Lake said it like this. And if you, John Lake is a tremendous inspiration in healing and in, in walking in the spirit. If you don't have his book, you must have it. I'm telling you, it has changed my life. His teachings changed my life. Divine healing, he said, is the removal by the power of God of the disease that has come upon the body. But divine health is to live day by day, hour by hour, in touch with God. Now that's better. To live day by day, hour by hour, in touch with God so that the life of God flows into the body just as the life of God flows into the mind or flows into the spirit. Now that is the way you want to live in divine health. That's what we ought to be shooting for. That's God's will for us, to live in divine health. And the more caught up you are in God, the more you can do that. The more caught up you are in the things of God, the more you can do that. The more difficult it is for Satan to get close to that fountain of life sickness and disease to get close to that fountain of life that's overflowing in you. Now, I want to just make a statement about this, about the will of God. You know, we, we just really come to healing school to find out God's will for our healing. Those are marvelous scriptures right there that lets you know, really, that it's God's will to heal. God has always healed His people. He's always made a way for them to be well. Always. In the Old Covenant, in the New Covenant, He's made a way for His people to be well. He, that's because he's good and he wants his people well. So he made, he's made provision. He made provision for them under the old covenant. And if they would walk with him and do what he said, he said, as he said right there, he'd take sickness away from the midst of them. So you see God's will in healing from the very beginning. Now it would be absurd for God to provide healing for his people under a lesser covenant and then make a better covenant with better promises and, and there not be any healing provision. God would never do that because he'd have to change. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Well, I was raised in a church where they said healing had passed away. Everything passed away actually in that church. You didn't get anything there. <laughs> and uh, I remember my grandmother saying to me about Oral Roberts, he pays those people to say they're healed. And as a little girl, I thought, I wonder what he pays them, $5, $10? You know, I didn't question my grandmother. I mean, I never heard about healing anyway. I, well, there would be no reason for me to expect that it was real. I'd never heard anything about it. I'd never heard really anything much of anything, just what you don't have, you know. And uh, for God, for healing to pass away, God would have to undergo a change. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. 
Now, the Scripture teaches us there's no shadow of turning with Him, no variation with God. He said, I am the Lord and I change not. So whatever God does, that's just His nature. That's the way He is. He, for Him to change, he, not to heal anymore, He would have to undergo a tremendous change. After the book of Acts, actually, because in the last chapter of the book of Acts, all the people on the island where Paul was shipwrecked were healed, it said. And Weymouth says all the people. It just, I think in the King James it says the sick were brought to him and they were healed. But in Weymouth's translation it says they were all healed. And uh, he would have had to have changed. But you see, God doesn't change. He's always been good. He'll always be good. This time, jillions of years from now in eternity, he'll still be good. And so you can see the will of God done in three places where God's will was done unhindered. You can see God's will in sickness and disease and healing and so on in these three places. One of them was the Garden of Eden. There was no sickness, no disease, no pain, no lack, plenty of everything, abundance, perfect. It was good. Didn't God make something and say, it was, it's good, it's good. He made this and it was good. Well, what, what else would a good God do but make something good? So you see the will of God done before sin came in the Garden of Eden. Then you see the will of God done unhindered in heaven. No pain or sorrow there, the Bible says. No sickness or disease. No lack. No sorrow of any kind in heaven. Oh, what a wonderful place it's going to be. I wish Jesus would come right now. I just wish he'd come right now. You talk about a believer's convention. <laughs> Friend, we are going to have a believer's convention when we get to heaven. It is going to be so wonderful. And if you've lost loved ones and they've already crossed over to the other side and you're grieving for them, you're spending your time. Wasting your time. Wasting your time. They wouldn't come back if they could. Once you cross over into the glory, this place looks like the pits. Grief is not of God. Death, the spirit of death, and the spirit of grief travel together. The spirit of death comes into a family, the spirit of grief right there on his heels to ruin the rest of the family. And many people are sick because they're grieving. What happens when you start grieving? Well, you, the life of God quits flowing out of you. You get down, you get depressed. Grief is one of the most powerful things to suppress the life of God in you. Grief will not ever give you any reward. What happens? Well, I, I know just recently there was a person grieving, and I'm telling you, they had gotten really sick. It, it opens the door to sickness and disease. It opens the door to all kind of things in your life. So if you've lost a loved one, and you, you, they were a believer, really, they're much better off than they were. Scripture says heaven's not only better, it's far better. Paul said that. He said, I don't know whether to go or to stay. You, you know, I, like he'd like to go, but you need me, so I think I'll stay. But he said in that scripture in Philippians, it's far better. Though I tell you, heaven is the most wonderful place. They have meetings there. They have gatherings there. They worship God. They're full of joy. In the presence of God is fullness of joy. That, that person you lost doesn't want to come back. You say, well, I don't know if they got saved or not. I don't think they were saved. Well, that's just it. You don't know what happened in the last part of their lives. But this thing you do know, you've got a life to live before God. And if you're going to let grief take you over, you'll not run your race and you won't fulfill what God's called you to do. So get your mind off of that. Just roll the care of it over on the Lord. There's not one thing you can do to change it from here. You don't know what that loved one did in the last moment. You don't even know they could have been saved before the last moment and you might have been the last one to know. But what is important is that you do what's right. You do what's right. And what is right is for you to live every day in joy. Didn't the scripture say rejoice? And again I say unto you rejoice. You cannot rejoice and grieve. Hallelujah. So when, so when that thought comes to you of grief, you rebuke it. It's from the devil. You rebuke it. You say, you spirit of grief. In the name of Jesus, I break your power. You get out of my presence. You're not living here in my house. 
You're not tearing up the rest of my family. You're not bringing any sickness or disease or opening the door to other evil spirits here. You get out in the name of Jesus and you deal with it. Now that's one reason that people don't get healed because they, they try to live under that spirit of grief. So rebuke it. Now, I think it's gonna rain today. So we might as well not be in any hurry. We'll just sit here and go into the Word of God. Mercy me. In the name of Jesus, you don't touch this place. In Jesus' name, we bind you. Now you get out of here, Weather. You get out of here, Weather, in Jesus' name. This is the sanctuary of the Lord today. And I rebuke any kind of bad weather. I rebuke any storm over this city. You get out in Jesus' name. We take authority over you. We take authority over you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now lights, you stay on in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The, the third place you see the will of God done is in the ministry of Jesus. When Philip said, show us the Father, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Everything Jesus did, the Word says that he spoke the words that God spoke. He said, I only do what I see my Father do. So everything that he did was what God was telling him to do. Let's read that scripture. We quoted it, but let's read the scripture in Acts 10 about Jesus' ministry how Peter described it, Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. It's raining on me. Come help me. Are y'all getting wet? In the name of Jesus. What did the convention people want to do? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. He wants to make an announcement. Get him a mic, Mary. That guy, he wants to make an announcement. I'll just Here. go ahead and do it. Do you know what to do? To All right. Okay. We want to ask you, please, I'm not gonna because leave. of the roof, we want to go over to the exhi uh, exhibition hall. So if you'd take your things, please, and just move orderly through this door here, over to the exhibition hall next door. 
The attendants with the people in the wheelchairs, please come down and assist them. Just go in an orderly manner. Everything is fine. The Lord is in control. Yeah, I just don't want to rush out. So if you will, just move over to the exhibition hall. by the word of God. After we pray, you begin to do what you couldn't do before. If you couldn't stretch out your hand, stretch it out. If you couldn't bend over, bend over. If you couldn't walk, get up. If you couldn't see, you look. If you couldn't hear, that spirit of deafness is going to leave you in the name of Jesus. So just close your eyes. You can sit up or stand up or lay down if you want to in here. I don't think it matters. <laughs> but you've got to stand up on the inside. So lift up your hand and say this. The gospel that I've heard. The gospel that I've heard. Go ahead and close your eyes and just close out everything but the Lord. The gospel that I've heard is the power of God unto my salvation. I confess, Jesus Christ I confess Jesus Christ as Lord over my life, as Lord over my life. Spirit, Spirit, soul, soul and, body. and body. I receive the power of God, I the power of God to, make me sound, to make me sound, whole, whole delivered, delivered saved, saved, healed, healed right, now. right now. I act on the Word of God. And receive the power of God. Sickness, disease, and pain. I resist you in the name of Jesus. You are not the will of God for me. I enforce the word of God on you. I'll not tolerate you in my life. Leave my presence. I'll never allow you back. My days of sickness and disease are over. The power of sickness has been forever broken over my life. I am the saved. I am the healed. Jesus bore my sickness, weakness and pain, and I am free. Sickness shall no longer lord it over me. Sin shall no longer lord it over me. Fear shall no longer lord it over me. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. And I proclaim my freedom in Jesus' name. Today, the gospel is the power of God to me. Unto salvation. Unto salvation. I receive the gospel. I, the gospel. I, act the gospel. I act on the gospel. And I am made whole. Made whole. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Now each one of you just lift up to Jesus what you'd have him do for you right now. Just say it to him. Lord, I would have you do this. And you tell him what it is. Lord, we would have a marvelous and wonderful manifestation of your healing power here right now. I take authority over every sickness, over every disease, every infirmity. I take authority over every evil spirit, every evil addiction in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every devil, I take authority over you in Jesus' name and I command you to loose this people and let them go. Jesus, the healer is healing them now, delivering them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. 
be made whole, be made whole, be made whole in Jesus' name. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. Step out on your faith. Jesus has come to meet you today and do exactly what you asked him to do, exactly what you believed him to do. And Lord, we give you the praise and the glory. I break the power of every disease in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I rebuke blind spirits off your eyes and I command your eyes to see and to be normal in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to your blood to be healed and normal in Jesus' name. I command your knees, your back, your bones to get in place, to be strengthened, to be normal in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I rebuke scoliosis off your spine. You get off of them in the name of Jesus. I rebuke paralysis and any kind of infirmity that would impair your body. And I command you to go free in the name of Jesus. Jesus sets the captives free from a body that doesn't work in the name of Jesus. I speak to your heart, your organs, your heart. Command your heart to be normal and healed and whole. Your liver to recover and to be absolutely new in the name of Jesus and to be made whole. I speak to kidneys to be normal and to function, to be restored in Jesus' name. I rebuke cancer, every form of cancer. I command the spirit life to die in that cancer. You come out, you die and come out in the name of Jesus. I rebuke tumors and abnormal growths. And I command them to go from you in Jesus' name. Every tumor, you leave them now. You dissipate and don't you ever come back in the name of Jesus. Cancer, don't you ever come back. This one has been healed. This one is, has been saved from sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Lord, and we give you glory. I rebuke every dark and evil spirit off your mind in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Jesus of Nazareth is healing you, delivering you, and making you free. Just lift up your hands and say, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. I receive it, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I magnify you and glorify you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord God. I want to hear from somebody who can do what you couldn't do before. Are the lumps gone? The pain's gone? Some testimony that the healing has already been manifested. Now Jesus is still healing. He'll heal in here till we leave. And he'll continue to work on you even after that. But somebody, just come quick. Let Make way for somebody to come give us. I'd like to hear about five red hot testimonies. I've been having pains in my neck. The doctor said I was supposed to have a hysterectomy. I am not going to have a knife on my body Amen. by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Thank Amen. you, God. The, pain, the pain's all gone. The pain's gone. The pain's gone. She's healed. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Oh, we don't need these nasty need old cigarettes. Anymore. Hallelujah. Glory to God. She's free. Say it. I'm free. I am free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And Glory thank to you, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yesterday, made a week, I had surgery on my neck. They had to take the disc out. And I was suffering with severe. Speak. Get right close to me here. I was suffering from severe muscle spasms in my neck and losing my arm. But praise God, it had a burn. And then now I. It's normal. I can. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Wonderful, Lord. Glory to God. This is wonderful. I had a headache every minute of this meeting until she started praying. It left. Hallelujah. I don't have not Glory one to bit. God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. When I came, I could hardly see. And I can. In the name of Jesus, my back is healed and my eyes are healed. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for healing him. 
We came here believing, especially my wife. My wife's just been believing. I've been in pain in my knees for 10 years. And I was believing, and then I wasn't believing, and then I was believing, and I wasn't believing. But my wife was believing. She stayed with it. Last night, in last night's service, we were praising and praying, and at the moment Brother Ken came on the stage, he said, just praise God and give it up. And I asked, I, I dedicated and I gave it up. Yeah. And I said, I want my inheritance right now. And the first words out of Brother Ken's mouth was, somebody's knees are being healed, and it was mine. Praise God. Hallelujah. Wonderful. See? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I came here today to finish the job, and it was just done now. My foot is better. I'm walking like yes, I'm 15 healed. years old. Praise Hallelujah. God. He's God bless you. That's great. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name. Receive your healing. Be made whole. Heal to recover. Heal in the name of Jesus.